This video presentation is a continuation of part one. We were looking at social and ideological factors faced by the curriculum. So far we've looked at political, economic, and technological. We shall now continue with diversity. Curriculum development affected from diversity opens learning opportunities. Social diversity, including religion, culture, and social groupings, affect curriculum because these characteristics influence the types of topics and methods for teaching information. Developing relevant curriculum takes into account society's expectations, accommodating groups, tradition, and promoting equality. The next issue would be environmental. Environmental issues affect curriculum development. World awareness and action towards reversing and ending pollution continues to affect curriculum development. Typical primary classroom teaching, recycling and healthy environmental practices is still ongoing. Child psychology. Many students with a master's or PhD degree in developmental psychology work in educational settings as school psychologists which makes sense when considering the emphasis placed on the formative years. However, there are several de de developmental psychology concentrations available on which students can focus. For example, developmental studies for educators, aging, infancy, childhood or adolescence, lifespan development, biological basis of development. The development psychology curriculum examines the changes in personality, cognitive ability, and behavior throughout the lifespan. Therefore, in addition to preparing themselves for a rewarding career, students enrolled in developmental psychology curriculum will also learn and understand more about themselves as they study the scientific conclusion made by experts in the field. We shall now look at the institutional and instructional problems that face our schools. Discipline. Classroom management and discipline issues are plaguing our educational establishment across the Caribbean. I'm sure you can agree with that. There's also the whole idea of basic standards. I'm sure you would agree with me that standards in our school are dropping rapidly. Of course, one of the many reasons is the whole idea of teacher effectiveness. Some teachers are not giving their all and it is resulting in such a deterioration of our, you know, our profession. Then the whole idea of drug abuse education. In some of our schools over the Caribbean, the influence of drugs is having its impact on the school system. Things like sex education, family life, life skills, the fact that the family as an institution is failing miserably. The school and as teachers, we have to take up the slack to make up for the home and family um, default. This is indeed a serious problem that's facing over the Caribbean and maybe the world at large. And finally, on the social issues, let's look at the issues that can affect the curriculum. We have globalization. Looking at the demographic trends, how can you meet educational needs, demand and expectation of its stakeholders? The whole idea of educational challenges, anticipating the knowledge, skills and critical thinking abilities and wisdom needed for the globalized future. Another issue is here, the lack of sequence lack of coordination among group working of, on curriculum development. Many of you have indicated in your comments in the forum that schools are um, having curriculum where all the parties are not involved in, in, in coordinating and working together. Then the whole idea of economic problems, you know, um, new teaching materials, teacher in service training, these are all going to be suffering because of economic and problems that face many of our schools over the Caribbean. And lastly, we have what is called inadequate evaluation. 
evaluation must become an integral part of the total learning process and not an appendage to it. This is what is happening in most of our schools. We will now address the last of the objectives of this module, that is the psychological issues and curriculum. The following three questions will be looked at as we delve into the psychological issues of the curriculum. They are, how do learners grow and develop? What are some of the ways in which they learn? What do psychologists say specifically to the curriculum improver? These questions are going to be addressed as we continue this objective. Learners, the growth and development. Growth involves increasing size of individuals. Development increase in their physical complexity. As students grow and develop, their ability to grasp concepts and ideas would vary. As teachers, we must recognize these changes. Several strategies are, are to be used by teachers in accommodating the educational needs of individual learners. The whole idea of psychology is for us as educators to understand the learning process. Now, since learning can be considered a change in behavior, and psychology is a study of human behavior, we can see quite clearly the close connection. In order to bring about this change, educators must understand how that change happens. A motivated learner acquires what he or she learns more readily than one who is not motivated. Hence, we need to help our students to become more motivated in the classroom. Learning under the control of a reward is usually preferable to learning under the control of punishment. Active participation by learners is preferable to passive reception of the content to be learned. When pupils learn concepts, they need to have these concepts presented in varied and specific situations. Then they should try to the concept in situations different from those in which they were originally learned. People learn a great deal from each other. When they have been together a long time, they learn from each other more rapidly than they do from peers who are strange to them. We must keep that in mind. Pupils also remember new subject matter that confirms their previous attitude better than they remember new subject matter that opposes their previous attitude. And lastly here, learning is aided by formulating and asking questions that stimulate thinking and imagination. Educational psychology suggests that in selecting and organizing school experiences for students, the following five criteria may be used. One, learning experiences should be designed to allow practice of the behavior that the objective suggests. That's number one. Number two, learning experiences should express what this learner believes he or she is expected to know. Thirdly, learning experiences should sometimes be of the self-activating type. Students need opportunities to, pro to proceed at their own rate through subject matter that suits them. Learning experiences should be fostered whenever possible in intimate face-to-face -face relationship within small groups. Of course, learning experiences should be as varied as the objectives they represent. There has been too great a tendency to utilize a few kinds of experiences to achieve several objectives. Some use of psychology in making decisions about the curriculum. Let's look at five of them here. One, expectations of students' achievement have been stated against a background of goals and objectives. So therefore, all our expectation has to be based on our goals and our objectives. Two, learning experiences should be designed to allow practice of the behavior that the objective suggests. Therefore, we need to have a component of practice or hands-on in our teaching in the classroom. Three, learning experiences should express what the learner believes he or she is expected to know. Very important here. And 
Lastly, here the ways in which learning experiences are put together greatly affect the achievement of objectives. That's good to remember here because as we are in control of the experiences that are in our classroom, we are in control of our students achieving their objectives, the objectives that we set for them. Continuing. In this structured environment, it is possible to examine the goals and objectives to determine whether they are based on good psychological practice or sound learning theories. These two, these two things go hand in hand. Several key questions reflect the relationship of psychology to the wise selection of objectives. They are as follows. Is the objective attainable by the school and the student? How long will it take to attain a given objective? At approximately what age should striving for the achievement of given objectives be initiated? To what extent should objectives be repeated in subsequent years of schooling? In what ways are objective, objectives multiple in their effect? As we close, we realize that findings in educational psychology suggest that in selecting and organizing school experiences for students, the following five criteria may be used. Let's look at them very carefully here. 1. Learning experiences should be designed to allow practice of the behavior that the objective suggests. Learning experiences should express what the learner believes he or she is expected to know. Learning experiences should sometimes be of self-activating type. Students need opportunities to proceed at their own rate through subject matter that suits them. Learning experiences should be fostered whenever possible in intimate face-to-face -face relationship within small groups. Learning experiences should be as varied as objectives they represent. There has to be too great a, there has been too great a tendency to utilize a few kind of experiences to achieve several objectives. The last point here is the ways in which learning experiences are put together greatly affect achievement of objectives. Thank you.